huge 19 to 13 and we're not going to call it an upset victory over Boise State Rocky Long became the first coach since 2000 to win twice at Boise Rocky Long on with extra 1360 this morning coach great victory congratulations what was working so well for you well I appreciate it guys I hope you're doing okay this morning on a Monday couldn't be better right we could keep him a little under the weather if I'm being honest with you oh jeez did you give me a cold Rocky uh, I hope I didn't. It was probably that travel you had. I mean, I, That's true. You know, I listened to you guys on the radio coming in this morning. It must, it must have went really well. I told you you'd do fine. I know. Rocky gave me the best advice uh, for meeting Dad. Rocky, I believe you said uh, spoke only when spoken to, right? Speak yeah, only when spoken works. to. <laughs> That's smart. Very smart. That's a good rule. Coach, game got off to a little bit of a rough start. There was a muff punt at your own four-yard line that led to Boise's first points of that game. How'd you guys recover so quickly, and how'd you keep the right mindset? Well, I think, I think we went into the game with the right mindset, obviously. I, I, I think our players understood how good they were and how big a battle it was going to be, and it was going to be from start to finish. And I thought we were in good shape. Not because we dropped the punt, but once we dropped the punt, they had the ball on the four-yard line. It took them four plays to get it in there. So uh, the defense had come ready to fight, and they played pretty well most of the night, most of the day. Rocky, if you don't mind, we'll brag on you a little bit. Rocky, the only active coach in the country who has defeated Boise State in Boise twice. The Aztecs are two and one since 2000, while the rest of the country is six and 108 when traveling to Boise. Rocky, when you went back and watch film what had you most excited about what you saw and what, what impressed you the most with your team and how they showed up well most, mostly it was the pressure we were able to get on the quarterback and the secondary playing a lot better than they have uh, leading up to that game I mean the the defensive line and linebackers did a nice job making the quarterback he's the best quarterback in our league making the quarterback very uncomfortable and he got knocked around a little bit, and he didn't throw it quite as well. But when he threw it kind of bad, our DBs made some really good plays. And we had three interceptions, and, you know, we, we'd we had two up to this time, and only and one of them was a D lineman intercepted a pass. So the second, secondary played much, much better, and we were able to pressure the quarterback. You're getting really good play out of redshirt freshman Darren Hall. He's put two games together with interceptions. He also added a sack and a forced fumble. Is this a kid that you can just watch his confidence grow from week to week? Yeah, he's got a lot of athletic ability, and he's wearing number 23 on purpose. He asked for number 23 because that's DeMonte Casey's number, and hopefully he'll turn into that kind of player, but he's had a couple really good weeks. Rocky, I know you were nervous. You've mentioned a number of times how many freshmen that you traveled uh, was that an area that you thought could jump up and bite you with just having such a young team uh, going up against Boise? Well, we're still really young. Now, Now most of them played pretty well in this game, but uh, when you have a young team, you never know when uh, the inexperience is going to raise its ugly head. But it didn't in this game, and they, they performed at a high level. So, yeah, we had I think we had 19 redshirt freshmen or freshmen on the trip, and a whole bunch of them played a lot. So, you know, like a guy like Jordan Bird that takes his 70-something yards for a touchdown, he's a true freshman, and we finally got him out in the open so everybody could see how fast he was. But you never know when the inexperience factor will jump up. You're talking about that Jordan Bird third down call. You guys were just three for 14 on third downs. However, that massive third down call and the execution by the end of round with a little toss out of it, 10 minutes to go in the fourth. Were you anticipating a home run there, or was that just a get-to-the-yards-to-go stick? And we'll see what happens. Well, honestly, uh, our coaches staff did a great job scheming that up. And we, we tried to run it earlier when we, when we were going to go for fourth and one. We tried to run it, and they called timeout right as the ball was being snapped. So I guess that was good we didn't get to run it. Now, we got stopped on fourth and one, so that put us in a little bit of a bind. But later on, it was the exact same play, and the ex- execution was unbelievable. And then everybody got to see how fast he was. We all thought that once he got in the open, nobody could catch him, and that was true. Rocky, I've got a theory on on why the Aztecs football program feels as steady as it does, and it has to do with you. A lot of times, group of five coaches are trying to use that opportunity to get to a power five or whether it's to, to earn more money uh, at a higher-paying job. But because you have you stated the age that you are and, and how you love being here at San Diego State University, do you think that because you're not using this program as a stepping stone and people know that you're here for the long haul, whatever that means, that it allows the program to be as steady as it is? 
I don't I don't know if that's it. I, I think maybe it's a little bit of a factor, but the real the real issue is that our coaches do a really good job of recruiting really good kids that fit into what we do. And they fit into what we do, and they're the right kind of guys. I mean, I was asked after the game, how come we play so well up there? It's because our, our guys go with the right attitude. Everybody else goes with the attitude that, oh, my God, we're playing Boise on a blue turf. Our guys go up there and know Boise's really, really good and got a great coaching staff, and we're going to have to play really hard to have a chance to win. But we don't go up there, and I think a lot of teams go up there and the mystique gets them. It doesn't get us. And and that's because our coaches do such a great job of recruiting the right guys. Coach, one of the guys you recruited, Chase Jasmine, he limped off after the last draw on the game that he got to run with what appeared to be a hamstring. How's he doing? He's fine. Uh, he, he has that hamstring issue. He always has that hamstring issue. You know, all those guys, I never know how this works because I wasn't fast enough to have a hamstring <laughs> Me problem, either. But, there is a minimum uh, speed there. Yeah, but, but all those fast guys seem to have hamstring issues, and he's got one that tweaks every once in a while, but he's fine. Rocky, you got a quick turnaround. Um, did you Were you able to enjoy this one, or did you immediately start thinking about the triple option? No, we worked on the triple option on the flight home. I mean, that, as coaches, we did. Now, the trick is trying to get our defense ready to go from guy that wants to throw it 50 or 60 times a game to someone that's going to run the triple option. I think the triple option is the best offense ever invented, and I think it's the hardest one to stop. And having a short week trying to get ready for it, it's a a real difficult situation. But we practiced yesterday. We don't normally practice on Sunday. We practiced yesterday. They'll get Saturday and Sunday off on the weekend, but we got to be ready to play Friday night. Short week, how physical are you going to let the guys be for the week of preparation? Well, we're going to do it like we always do. Uh, yesterday was no pads. We'll go pads, shoulder pads and helmets today and tomorrow. And, and then obviously Wednesday we'll go no pads again. We're going to try to treat it like a normal week. We just started the day early. Rocky, I know that you don't let uh, freshmen talk to the media. Do you ever have some freshmen, even like a Jordan Bird, after that 72-yard huge play, they would be like, come on, coach, let, let, me, let me go talk to the media. <laughs> let me go share some thoughts with them. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm – sure, uh, they would like to talk, and I'm sure the social media deals out there. You know, we try to educate them on social media, but uh, they are who they are, and that generation, that's how they – so we always wonder if they're going to come out on social media and say something. But so far, we're back to recruiting. If you recruit the right guys, they understand the reason. Freshmen have to earn their stripes. He had not earned his stripes. He doesn't get to talk to the media. As soon as he gets uh, – it'd be a second-year guy. If he plays good enough, we'll let him talk to the media. That's it, Rocky. It's the systems you talk about. You got the right systems in place. Don't let them talk. Never come off of that position. I love it. True freshman, you stay quiet. Speak only when spoken to. It's like the advice you gave Judson. <laughs> and it's like the advice you give That's kickers. Right. Yeah, it's exactly what I give kickers. <laughs> kickers are a little bit subhuman. Rocky Long, what's what has to be accomplished this weekend, this Friday against Air Force? Uh, it would really be nice if we can control the ball and keep them off the field. That's always our number one issue. Uh, and then if we can't, if we can make them earn what they get on offense, not give up a big play. You know, they, our Air Force crushed Navy last week, and they had a couple long pass plays for touchdowns as well as running the triple option. And that that's the trick. You got to be able to stop the triple option or at least slow it down, but not give up big bombs and. Navy wasn't able to do that, and they see the triple option all the time. So, obviously, we're nervous again. Rocky, hey, just uh, thanks again for the great advice. you got two daughters, so you're a good one to uh, offer advice for meeting the dad. I took yours. Thank you. Well, I I heard you did really good. You know, there was a lot of people that helped you, though, but it was mostly you. (laughs) It was mostly you. You're right. It was me, Rocky. You're right. It was. (laughs) (laughs) Rocky, congrats on the victory. Best of luck this upcoming week against Air Force. Go get them. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. All right. Thank you. There's Rocky Long. That's got to be a bit of a relief, getting that big win in Boise. But then you come up and you talk about a trap game. This is no way could be a trap game. Air Force, it's like complete outlier, different game. And Rocky's like, and we're already nervous. And you can tell he's happy about being nervous. He's like, we have something to draw the kids' attention away from their success in Boise. It's like, let's look at this. They put a thumping on Navy, who's always got a really solid football program. They thumped them. I think 35 points, big plays in the pass and the run. 
Rocky now gets to get after his guys a little bit and show them why they should be anxious. Can I give you a little bit more about my group of five theory and Rocky Long not going anywhere, which sure. is so different than everything that we know, really. Stability. Yes. It's huge. And, and, and how I think it really does trickle down, especially when it comes to, quote, unquote, trap games after big wins. Totally.